Hello, I'm Meredith Brown. I'm your instructor for your human relations class. Today I wanted to go over unit or chapter three in unit two. Um, it's the stress chapter, so it's quite applicable uh, for everyone that is even is in existence. All right, so everyone experiences some kind of stress. <clears throat> Starting off in the beginning of the chapter, it talks about the different types of stress. Um, Stress can be defined as a nonspecific response to the body for demand of change. So basically stress is a change or a perceived threat that is made on the individual. Okay. So a stressor causes your body to uh, respond. So let's say that somebody cuts you off. There's that response. There's that stress response. That doesn't have to be stressful. But there's a stress response. Your body kind of kicks in. Uh, adrenaline, norepinephrine, cortisol steroid gets released. So this all happens um, when you have that stress response to something. There's four types of stress. Okay, we have acute stress. This is the most common form of stress. It comes from demands and pressures from past and future. Um, so things like having a busy day, lots of things to do. It's just kind of that constant always sort of their kind of stress. It's acute stress. Then you have episodic acute stress. This is stress. Um, it's kind of a more serious form of acute stress. It's basically where you have a specific event that prompts the stress. So like we said with acute stress, it's the common things every day. Taking a quiz, getting an oil change, having to go to the store, all of that. Whereas episodic acute stress is something that focuses on um, a specific, uh, a specific act or a specific thing uh, that is going on. Um, then we have chronic stress. This is a type of stress that happens a month after month, year after year. It's where the person is in chronic stress mode. Now it's like, well, acute stress, what if you're constantly in bits of stress, like having to take a quiz and having to go here and having to go here? Well, most individuals, when you finish your exam, you know, you're good. And then you move on to the next thing. So it's not that there's a constant stress going on with chronic stress. This is something where somebody is in a state of chronic stress. So for example, somebody who's maybe a caregiver or, um, someone who is, uh, when you talk about being in, uh, in a war situation or being a caregiver to a medically fragile child or, uh, an adult even, uh, anything that kind of brings uh, EMS workers, healthcare workers, anything that where you are in that constant state of stress. One thing uh, people forget about the 911 operators. Um, a lot of 911 operators start to suffer from chronic, chronic stress. Um, and there's people don't think about it, but they're constantly getting bombarded with extremely stressful events during the whole day. So it's, it's very, very important for people that are in fields that have a constant stressor going on that they can and bring themselves down from that when they get out they can find that relaxation they can find you know they can break from that stress so they don't get into a place where they are experiencing chronic stress um and then uh lastly there's eustress now eustress is the positive stress this is a stress that we take on when like something good is happening. We're still stressed, you know, cause stuff is going on. Oh, that is not coffee from today. <laughs> Stressful, right? Anyways, I don't know where that's from, but anyways, um, ah, so eustress is that positive stress. Okay. So that's the thing that, uh, helps you to, uh, have like energy to do something or the motivation to do something even. So my wedding, for example, positive stress. I was stressed, yes, but I felt really good about it. So my body was releasing oxytocin and energy and serotonin and I was feeling happy. So job interview, for example. So if you go into a job interview and, um, and here you are at your job interview and they're asking you know, all kind of questions and, um, you're feeling a little bit nervous. This is eustress. You're feeling good about it though. You're excited to be there. And there's a thing called the human functioning curve. Well, this human functioning curve, it kind of shows you where your optimal performance is. 
So like welding, for example, is a great example of you stress. You may feel, you know, I'm a little bit stressed because I got to do this really long weld. It has to be a weld from, you know, A all the way to G or all the way to Z. I don't know how it's quantified in welding, but you got to do a really long weld. And so you start on it and it's a pattern path and you got your nerves, but that's keeping you focused. But if you get too nervous, what happens? You start to get kind of shaky, like you're too nervous, like, oh, and if you're too laid back, oh, I'm just chilling, doing this, then you can make mistakes. There's an optimal performance level. So this stuff is really applicable in all kind of fields, but there's an optimal performance level of, of what would be considered stress or I really like to consider it more um, excitable factors. I don't like the word stress. It bothers me. It stresses me out. <laughs> but but that's the language that is used. So looking at the uh, human functioning curve, you see there's a drop zone. Let me cut this out for you. Let me show you this to you. Actually, let me find a picture of the human uh, function curve for you. And if you're following along in your text while I'm doing this, that's where I'm doing but yeah, here's the human uh, functioning curve. So as you notice, you go healthy tension, healthy tension. You have your optimal performance range. But then if you start getting too anxious, you can break down fatigue zone and then get into uh, feeling ill. So you want to stay right around here in the creative calm zone. So check that out. It's actually would be very, it's very helpful uh, when you start thinking about anxiety and thinking about um, how it can help you. It's not necessarily your enemy. It can be very helpful. All right. So stress is the body's, st stress is the body's response to change. Stress is defined in many ways and stress and type of things that cause stress can vary from person to person. That's another thing you guys got to know. This is subjective. What stresses you out may not stress me out. So it's really subjective based on you. And be, be careful not to be a judgy McJudgertons because you don't want to judge people based on what their stress levels are. That's one of the things that um, we really push in, in, in clinical work is to when somebody says, I don't know why I'm upset about this because I know other people aren't. It's, it's not. This is not, you're not basing your life off other people. So if you feel like you've reached a place of stress or you're in a situation of kind of that chronic stress, um, that's personal to you. So I see a lot of people that um, they, you know, I talk with a lot of students. They'll say, um, well, I don't know why I can't get it, but I know other people are fine, but there's, there's no but there. There's no other people. Um, it's you. It's where you are. So that's the thing that's the key to stress um, and the key to getting help, too, uh, with anything, really. Evaluate yourself. It doesn't matter how other people are coping and what other people are doing. It's where you are. And if you need help on a test or you need help on an assignment or you need help um, or you just want to chat about something, that's when you reach out, not, well, I know so-and-so is doing fine. I should be, too. All right. So just remember, stress is very subjective. All right, so some of the symptoms of stress, we all know this stuff, uh, headache, muscle tension, chest pain, fatigue, uh, digestion issues, that is a big one, stomach upsets, and of course, sleep problems. All right, so sources of stress, uh, lots of sources of stress. You've got work stress, uh, home stress, family stress. Um, and with regards to work stress, if you're in your text with me, I'm on 3.3. Uh, work stress, you have uh, the American Institute of Stress, Stress in the Workplace, published uh, February 19th, 2012. Um, common stresses in the workplace are long hours and increased demands, uh, being feeded un treated unfairly, feeling that you're being treated unfairly, uh, little or no acknowledgement or reward. This is a big one. Um, even if somebody is just saying, wow, that looks really great, you know, it totally can help relieve a lot of the stress because you start feeling I'm doing right, I'm doing the right thing, or people noticing. So lack of control, the concept of micromanagement, uh, being told exactly what to do, exactly when to do it, and exactly how to do it. Uh, for some people, like I said, remember, stress is subjective. That is not my coffee. So for some people, um, 
they don't mind being micromanaged. Like it, they like to be told exactly what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. For them, that's the perfect job. But for other people, it's like, okay, I got it. Okay, I got it. You've already told me. And it feels very stressed to be constantly picked at, all right, or constantly told what to do. Um, but it really kind of depends on your personality as well. Uh, lack of job security, feeling kind of like, ah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep this job. What's going to happen? And off, obviously also office politics. I am very bad at office politics. I'm kind of myself all the time. Um, so fortunately, I haven't, you know, gotten into, <laughs> into too much trouble. Um, but, you know, there are different personalities, things you have to kind of deal with uh, that you wouldn't necessarily want to deal with at a barbecue. You know, I mean, that it, it's like, hey, you want to go here and visit this person? Nah, don't really feel like seeing them today. You can't do that when you got to go to work. If you got to go to work, you got to go to work. So you got to walk in. There's that person you don't really particularly care for. They're going to be there. So you got to find ways to kind of work within that. But that can create a lot of stress. All right. Um, also personal stress. Uh, this is everyday challenges, uh, things like traffic, you know, getting work done, um, laundry, uh, laundry, laundry, uh, laundry is the worst for me. Um, and then personality, uh, what that's talking about is our individual personalities. Some people handle stress differently. I, I don't like to use the word better. Um, I have a daughter that, that is medically fragile and, you know, I will watch a 22 minute seizure. We go up to 25 minutes at home. Anything after that, we go to the hospital. But I, I, I it's, it's, it, it's not that I'm better at it or I am, um, my personality is better built to handle stress. Um, or not, I am better at it, but it's not that I am better than others. It's just that I've, literally trained myself and gotten the skills that I need to be able to cope with that situation. Um, I, a nurse once told me it doesn't get better, but you get better at it. And I really believe that. So if you have things in your life that are like, oh, these things really, uh, these things really bother me, then get better at dealing with that situation. That situation may not get better. But getting better at dealing with that situation, you know, outside of, you know, personal harm, I mean, don't obviously be like, okay, I'm going to take the punch a little better. I mean, you don't want to be there, obviously. But I mean, if you have a coworker who's being mean to you or being cruel or there's things going on that are that are unethical, obviously, that needs to be faced in a different way. But when it comes to like the everyday stressors laundry, for example, I mean, I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous. Don't judge me. But I am horrible at keeping up with laundry. And it stresses me out so much to the point where I get really snippy. Instead of being that type A personality who's like, the laundry has to be done, the laundry has to be fixed, it has to be a certain way, it has to be this way, it has to be this way. I have had to pull back from that and say, the laundry may not get finished today and it's okay. <laughs> like, it's fine. It's in a basket. It's fine. Um, so... You can train yourself to be able to kind of pull back some of those very stressful situations and you can get better at handling those situations um, with training, with learning how to deal with stress. So for sure, most definitely. But we do have basic personalities that type A is going to be a little bit more wound up than the type B personality. But it takes all kinds though to operate a business and to run a world. So we don't want to take away say, you have a bad personality, you can't be that way. No, I mean, we need people's personalities, they're unique to them. So it's more so that if you have a personality that's um, going to be more, more susceptible to stress, then learning techniques to be able to uh, deflect that stress is good. So, and remember, if you have any questions, you can always email me, so. All right, and you know those of you who are here, if you have any questions, you can jump in and uh, and ask them in uh, chat, or you can ask them in um, uh, by sending me an email. So, all right, so work life balance. Everyone must man, uh, manipulate role in uh, work life balance. Everyone has multiple roles in their life, so being able to balance that work life balance. Um, one really big key on the work-life balance is leaving work at work, leaving home at home. Um, 
a great example of this is my daughter's special needs and a woman came in she had had a very bad day and my daughter went hi and she went oh, and rolled her eyes and turned her back and of course being a mama bear i was like excuse me my kid just said hi to you and you like blew him off and turned your back to her i was like that was really rude and she she turned around and said i have a home life and i was like and you have a job so say good morning to my kid and move on and she was like so upset with me but my point was that the fact that she had had a hard night that night my disabled child doesn't understand my child wasn't like oh she must have had a hard night last night ah it's all good like as an adult we can kind of recognize with that each other with each other but you know some people can't so if you had a really bad day at home and you come into work and you're like ah, 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 ah someone may be like Gosh, they have a bad attitude. It has nothing to do with work, but they're not able to kind of separate that. So you've got to kind of separate that out to a certain extent. Um, and bringing work home, if you've had a hard day with a coworker, you're coming home to a dog who's like, hey, what's up? How you doing? And you're like, stupid dog. Poor dog didn't do anything. The dog has nothing to do with it. Dog didn't, you know, take away the bonus. You know what I mean? So... You got to make sure you have that work-life balance where you get to enjoy life. You get to pull away from things that maybe are hard or stressful um, and create kind of that environment. Having working from home has been odd um, simply because um, it, it, they're kind of melding together, the work-home life. Um, I'm trying to keep them a little separate, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh but yeah, and also if you're in a place where you really dislike what you're doing and where you are, keep pushing through, keep doing your absolute best, but nothing's stopping you from looking for something else either. So, but you got to have that work-life balance. Um, next is life challenges. There's like 43 categories of life challenges that can create stress. There's more than 43 categories. Okay, y'all. I mean, obviously there's more than 43 categories. But here's the life events that they have kind of on the life event scale. Um, foreclosure of a house, change in schools, change in activities. Uh, I mean, if we start talking about what's going on uh, just in the last two months or what's in the last two months, I've had a change in eating habits. Um I've had to change a number of family get together. My sleeping habits have changed. Um, there's no more church activities at all. There's no social activities at all. Um, change in schools. I haven't really changed schools, modes, but not schools. But do you see what I'm saying? Like change in work hours for sure. They've increased for sure for me. But, you know, there's lots of different things that are going on here um, just in the last couple months that, of course, is going to create a stressful a feeling of chronic stress and that's why I got to pull back from that and say well you know ah this is going on I need to find ways to get outlets and one of the things I do is I game um, I'm on twitch uh, I zoom uh, with people like I'll have students that will come to my office hours just to chat like hey yo miss brown I'm just here to say hey how you doing I love it do it I am here so come see me all right so moving forward, uh, financial issues, number one, all right? I don't know why it's not listed at the top. Um, things can trump financial issues. So you may have somebody who gets very sick or you may have a death in the family or something like that can trump it for a minute. But financial issues are consistently number one. Um, so two things that can happen with financial issues. One, living above your means, money's kind of being thrown out there that doesn't need to be, or two, um, uh, f wasting money, like blowing money, like uh, like this, for example, ha ha, like we have, we buy five of these, they're the Gatorade Zeros, and then we purchase the big tub, um, and we use these bottles to fill the tubs, um, so... And we use these bottles for probably a couple of weeks until they start to get lost and then they're finally lost and then we don't have them anymore. This was something that I conceded to do um, because I, my husband loves to have Gatorade. Um, I can't, none of us can have the sugars. And so um, I said, you know, this will be an expense, but it's fine. 
instead of hitting the gas station constantly and buying this for two dollars and sixty nine cents, we now can make them for like forty five cents. I think it costs maybe forty cents to can to make one of these out of the big bucket. Once, actually, I think my husband did the math. I think it was like twenty two cents for um, each bottle. So, so yeah. So it gets it's one way to kind of curb the financial thing. Um, also, sometimes financial issues are there because times are just tough and the money's actually legit not there. Um, we, when my husband was laid off, um, he, the company he works for merged with another company. And so they laid off a bunch of people. I mean, it hit hard and we had to pull back a whole lot. We got rid of internet. We got rid of all cable, everything. Um, we had almost zero expenses outside of, you know, the house and the cars and the electric. And um, we did that for about six months. And we were able to kind of keep our heads above water until he found another job. So, uh, but financial issues, everyone has them. And at whatever place they are, um, you hear people all the time, if I just had this much money, everything would be better. But let me tell you this, though. Money does not bring uh, money does bring happiness. Okay. The, people tell you all the time, money doesn't bring happiness. Yes, it does. Um, it absolutely does because money can help you avoid misery. And that's why money is so helpful, but money does not bring more happiness. So if you're making enough money to take care of the bills, have a little extra, a little emergency fund, um, you got good health, you're going to have high, the highest satisfaction. Getting more money doesn't necessarily make you happier. So finding that balance is good. All right. Family and friend issues. Uh, challenges with uh, family in-laws and uh, friends create great sources of stress as well. So you got to be careful there. All right. So um, how do we reduce the stress? All right. So let's talk about reducing stress. Um to do, 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 I'm going to do the four, uh, the four as for dealing with stress. So here's four things for dealing with stress. Hold on. Four ways that people deal with stress. I'm going to cut this out for you. All right, let's get it. Here we go. Oh no. Sometimes I wonder. We got to move that. All right. No. This has got to go over here when I cut it, when I snip it, because... Wah, wah, wah. There we go. So when I look at it. All right. So um, so let's look at this. So we avoid the stressor. That's one way that we deal with it. We avoid the stressor. Um, so we look at the stressor. We put it in a positive light. Consider the stressor uh, and the long-term impact. Will the stressor be months or years? Then we next we alter it. Uh, we learn to say that no thing, that no say no to things that cause us stress, change the way uh, you're working with the stress and communicate needs and wants, then adapting to the stressor, change your opinion of the stressor. Okay. And then uh, looking for the stressor can look at how the stressor can be positive. This one, sometimes it's just not positive. <laughs> Sometimes there just ain't no happy. I had somebody tell me, you have to look at the silver lining in the cloud. And I'm like, mm, my cloud doesn't have a silver lining. There is not a silver lining on this cloud. But if you look at the accepting the stressor, I've accepted a stre the stressor. Um, finding other outlets to handle the stressor. My daughter having being medically fragile, um, having her issues. There's no silver lining on that. There's no... Uh, there's no positives I can come up with for the fact that she has moments of horror. There's no positives there. But if I get the tools to handle the stress, even though the cloud doesn't have a silver lining, I got the umbrella to be able to keep me safe from the storm when it hits. So that's one of these things about the dealing with stressors. Avoiding the stressor. This is just ignoring it. And sometimes that's that works. Look at the stressor, go, eh, you know, eh, eh, just gonna, eh, it's not my thing. 
And that works really well, especially with a lot of drama. There's a lot of drama going on. You kind of just pull yourself back. Um, I have always been one to literally walk out of the room when people start talking badly about other people. Um, even if somebody I don't particularly care for. I am not going to be party, party to that. Um, I just don't do it. Um, there are maybe three people in my entire life that I would have words about um, if somebody started poking me to get the words. But honestly, they're, they're not deserving of the energy either. Like, I'm not going to spend my energy on talking badly about them. So if we're sitting in, in a group together and somebody goes, well, you know, blah, 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 la, 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 la. I'm like, hey, I'm going to slip out and go ahead and hit the restroom and grab something to drink. I'll be back in a few minutes. And I'll literally leave the room. Um, people have kind of caught on to that. And I, I'll be honest, almost I, people almost never talk negatively about others in front of me unless they're coming to me with an actual grievance. You know, they may say, I, you know, this person, blah, 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 what should I do? Like that, yes. But so I just completely avoid that stressor. I don't want to hear negative things about people. I don't want to talk trash about people. You know, everyone's got their place. I'm not judging people. I'm, I'm, you know, next is altering the stress. And I'm giving you kind of the life end of this. You got your textbook. You can read that. But um, if you can't avoid it, if it's not avoidable, you can alter it. So let's say you're kind of trapped at the table and people are talking trash. You can alter what's kind of going on. You can change the situation. Be more assertive with it to say, that sounds really stressful how Betty treated, this is no names, by the way. I'm just throwing names out there. How, you know, Betty treated John, that does sound really stressful. Um, you know, but to change the subject or, but, uh, or if somebody says, you know, in, in that situation, if you can't get out of the meeting or, or you're in the workroom with somebody, um, even just to say, you know, I don't really like talking trash about people uh, because it makes me worry that they're talking trash about me. So I kind of make it a point in my life to not do that. Uh, how are you doing? You know what I mean? Like now you've put the focus on they can tell you how they're doing. Or I'd rather talk about you than other people. That's why, I'm, you know, I, I like that we're here. I'd rather talk about you than other people. How's your day going kind of thing. So Next is adapting to the stressor. Now with adaptation, um, just to give you kind of real life examples on this one. Um, you can't avoid it. You can't really change it. You can't change what's going on, so you have to adapt. So with my, so with uh, um, my daughter, for example, I've adapted by becoming as educated as I possibly can in the world of epilepsy. Uh, Dravet syndrome is what she's got, the world of epilepsy. Um, I mean, I could talk all day. Um, medical, the medical needs she has, the things, the medication she has to take, um, so it's so over my head like so over my head. There was a journal article I was trying to read. I'm still trying to read it. It's like 22 pages long. And I've already looked up like 16 words in the first 10 pages. So it's like, geez Louise, I'm not a neuroscientist. I don't know the answers. I don't know these words. Um, but I'm adapting to the stressor. I'm learning how to handle the stress of her situation because I need to be strong for her as well. Um, she's the one that's suffering from the disorder. I need to be very strong for her. So she can be strong for herself. And the next is accepting the stressor. Obviously, um, again, uh, these kind of tie together. Um, you learn to manage things and you just accept that stress is going to be in your life. And I disagree with stress being necessary. I look at it as more as challenges are going to be in your life. I am challenged by the things I have to do, I'm not stressed by them. And so if you look at things as a challenge instead of as stress, your body will respond uh, more positively. Uh, so, but accepting the stressor, this is how it is. This is what, and I'm, this is what I'm going to do to ensure that I stay healthy, even though this situation is exists in existence. All right, so other things things you can do. So uh, meditating you can do. And I love people throw out there, you can meditate. It's not that easy, all right? It's it's not. Um, and as soon as people say you can meditate, they um, people assume like, uh, oh, you know, on the top of a tower. It doesn't have to be that way. 
Uh, one thing you can do is, is go to Google this site. Just go to YouTube and type in One Moment Meditation. Here's this guy here. Um, you should be able to hear my desktop through here. Well, my name is um, Marty. So check this out. Watch this video. But don't. I, I'm not kidding you guys. This is going to actually really legit help. Um, like legit help. Like this is good stuff right here. Um, so I, I would most definitely uh, check that out for sure. What is happening here? Oh, okay. That is happening. All right. My mouse got caught on it. I couldn't move it. All right. Okay. Let's go back to my. All right. So let's go back. Uh, pampering yourself, uh, getting a massage, uh, going fishing, doing leisure activities, um, chewing gum. That helps when you're stressed. Use your mouth, draw something to do, but don't like try not to tighten up your jaw when you're really stressed. That's, that's, oof, it's a big one for me. I clench my back teeth when I get stressed. Um, other things, exercising, healthy diet, obviously. These are things that are obvious. Like I say when I'm teaching stress management, it's simple, but it's not easy. It's very simple to go walk for a mile. It is not easy to get your butt out there to do it. Okay. All right. Positive thinking. I love how they just throw that out there. <laughs> Chapter's like positive thinking. Um, positive thinking is not that easy. You know, I mean, it's like, just think positive. Okay. I don't know how to just think positive. Like I, that's a learned skill. Like I can flip switches cause that's, I'm trained to do it. I've taught myself to do it. Um, but wow, it's hard. Like especially if you have the negative self-talk like well i'll never make it i'll never be able to do this i'll never this that the other um get rid of those never words and shoulds i say to people stop shooting on yourself i should have done this i should have done that i should have been better stop like just stop because should doesn't help you um instead i didn't do this so i'm going to do this do you see the difference in that i should have I should have gone ahead and done the dishes because they're sitting in my kitchen and now I have to do them today. Oh, I can't believe I didn't do the dishes. I should have totally done the dishes. What is wrong with me for not doing the dishes? That's a rabbit hole. Don't go down that rabbit hole, okay? Instead, it's, I didn't do the dishes, so I'm going to take care of it today. See the big difference in that thinking? Um, that's what the, should will keep you awake at night. I should have done this. I should have done that. Instead of saying, I didn't do the dishes today. I can get up and do them now really quickly. Or I can go ahead and go to sleep. But sitting here saying, I should have done it, should have done it, should have done it, isn't going to help anybody. Okay? All right. So, um, and when it gets to big things, uh, like my daughter, I should have gone to the reunion with my dad because he passed away <clears throat> a week later. And, um, but her dad wasn't going. He called me to say, you know, I'm really not feeling well. You know, uh, is she going to, you know, I, I, yeah, you know, it, I'm probably not going to go. And so I told my daughter, I said, you know, your dad's probably not going to go, but you can go with, you know, your grandma if you want to. But I don't know if your dad's going to be there. He wouldn't have been there anyways because he wasn't feeling well. But my daughter still tells herself I should have gone to that reunion. It would have been the last time I saw him. And I'm like, honey, there's a million would have been's last times. We you maybe would have you maybe could have seen him at Walmart. You could have seen him when he came by the house. You know what I mean? Like there's a million of those. You, the last time you saw him and hung out with him was a great time. You guys painted, you went for a walk, you know? So think about that versus the should have or could have seen him once more. So, so anyways, but yeah, that's a skill to positively think is a skill. Ever, not people aren't just born with thinking positively because our brains are wired to seek out things that threaten us so we're constantly looking out for those things all right so that is your chapter three um just kind of a little breakdown uh, and you can follow along with me in your text when i'm reading through it you've got to make through to sure to read through these things um like the fight or flight response. I didn't talk about that. I must have missed that. Oh, symptom stress. That was in the beginning. Yeah, I did. Uh, the fight or flight response um, where your body will 
uh, kind of go into a defense mode where it's either going to fight, it's going to flee, or freeze, which is another one. Fight, flight, or freeze. Um, so read through this on kind of on your own. But this is your breakdown for Unit 3. I'll be doing another breakdown and posting it up for you uh, for the next, not Unit 3, Unit 2, sorry. Breakdown for Unit 2, and I'll be doing another one for um, Chapter 8 later uh, today. Thank you, so, or this week. Thank you so much, and have a marvelous day.